What is up, everybody? It is Thursday. Y'all already know that, and you already know what that means. It is a, another episode of InfoSec Unplugged, but this week is a special episode because I'm not even really going to talk this week. I'm just going to let my guests rock it and, you know, share these gems with you. So uh, thank you all for joining. I know you could be anywhere in the world, but you're here. You're not here for me. You're here for these amazing people I got here. So with that being said, I'm just going to shut the hell up now. And I'm going to go ahead and in introduce a guest. So my panel here, I'm just going to introduce them as they are coming in. Uh, before I do that, let me just get rid of this over here because y'all know what we're doing here. And we're going to go ahead and do this. So we're going to welcome y'all to the show. And again, if, if you don't know by now, we're doing the month of action where we're trying to hold each other accountable and come up with different tips that we can use to help each other elevate each other and, and, and just build each other up. And this was a perfect uh, topic because this is something that we've talked about all the time has been a well, uh, I guess people have asked for it and it's also been very controversial. So we're just going to go ahead and jump right into it. So my first guest I am going to welcome is McKenna Yakey. You've seen her here before. So let's welcome her back. Welcome back, McKenna. How you doing? We're going to give Hello. you a <laughs> Hi, hi, hi. So thank you for joining. Thank you for being here. And um, oh, Dante said we're here for you, DJX. We're here for you too. And I appreciate that. Appreciate the love. But uh, McKenna, go ahead and give a brief introduction as to who you are, and then we'll bring in the next guest. Yeah, so just real quickly, name's McKenna Yankee. I'm a security engineer uh, in the fintech industry. I'm also the uh, webinar leader over at Women's Society of Cyber Jitsu. I used to be the membership and volunteer lead over the Dallas chapter, which was really great. Built that up um, during the start of the pandemic. And now as a webinar lead, I'm helping to find uh others in the industry that can come and kind of talk about what it's like being in their different position positions. So we talk a lot about like career conversations and we do a lot of workshops. So if you're ever interested, stop by, come check out some of the webinars that we host. We have a lot of great content and more great content to come about me. All right. Well, thank you for joining. Uh, next we have, uh, my brother from another Mr. John breath, AKA Jay Bizzle. JB, there you go. We're going to hey, give man. you a round of applause. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Appreciate you uh, for having me here. We got an awesome panel of folks, so really looking forward to this chat. So uh, as Davin said, uh, my name's John Breath. I go by JB. Uh, originally started uh, in tech maybe whew, almost 20 years ago. I think I've been in for like 19 years. Started off in the Air Force, was uh, an ops tech there doing long-haul telecommunication. Bounced. Out of that, after four years, started working as a network engineer, cybersecurity engineer, uh, and then eventually transitioned into being a network and cybersecurity architect. So at the moment, I own my own consulting company. I also do a bunch of content creation. Uh, I may or may not be a unofficial pre-workout aficionado. Kind of something <laughs> else I do. Um, and I've I have an undergrad degree, grad degree, and way, way too many certs over the course of my career, which I think we're probably going to talk about uh, later on as far as which certs are beneficial and which ones aren't, and do certs even matter? So I, I look forward to uh, to that part of the conversation. And if you don't know, JB just flexed on us a little bit, so figuratively and literally with the with the you know the muscle <laughs> and all of that. So again, thank you for joining. Next, I know you've seen her here a couple times. Uh, leave nothing on the table was her slogan the first time she was on the show. And then the second time, we just kind of sat there and ranted for a couple hours. But I'm glad to have her back. So ladies and gentlemen, everybody in the chat, please welcome Dara J. Footman, also known as CCIE by 30. And bring her in. Thank you, Miss, for joining. I know you're. Thank I know you you're having me. I will say I know you're busy, so I appreciate you joining. So go ahead and give your introduction. All right. So hi everyone. My name is Deara Footman. I'm a network engineer. Um, I've been in the tech industry since 2010, officially working. Before then, I was in high school and attended the Cisco Networking Academy. That's how I got my start. Um, I've done a little bit of everything 
in the networking world from K through 12 education to a very large global company um, that I'm at now. Um, outside of that, I blog a little bit of content consumption, um, write threads on Twitter, <laughs> and just it generally enjoy reaching back and being the person I didn't have when I was starting out um, and just giving general advice. So thank you for having me. No, thank you for joining. Um, I'm having, looks like I'm having some technical difficulties. That's funny. But uh, let's see. Nope, I'm back. Okay, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So thank you for joining. Um, my next guest, I'm sure you've seen them all over the place. If you haven't, she is the author of the Financial Starter Kit. She is also someone who I secretly admire and hate at the same time because she is officially retired. So I had to get her on here and I got my notebook ready. So again, I tell y'all, sometimes I do the show for my own selfish reasons. But ladies and gentlemen, everybody in the chat, please welcome Simone B, also known as Bees. We're going to give her the round of applause and we're going to bring her in. Hey, hey, what's up? What's up? Thanks for inviting me out. No, thank you for joining. I know you're another busy one, uh, you know, with the retired life. And <laughs> but uh, you know, I've been following you, I think uh what was it, JB, like 2019, 2020, when it was just basically like there was all of y'all were on Twitter at one time, you Ari, everybody. So thank you for joining. And you know, you are definitely an inspiration and someone who I definitely had to have on this talk to join this panel. So go ahead and give a brief introduction as to who you are. Thank you. Thank you. So um, I went to school at VCU. Um, I got my bachelor's in computer science. I did software engineering for Raytheon for a couple of years. Then I went overseas to do overseas government contracting as a radar system engineer and also doing system administration work. Um, I did that for about five years. I made enough money to be able to invest and retire by 30. Um, and now, basically, I'm just a full-time investor, full-time entrepreneur, run different businesses, um, and I like to educate people on how to make money in tech, how to make six figures in their career, how to invest, and just live a life that you love. So that's pretty much what I do now. In a nutshell, there you go, so, to the point. Well, again, thank you for joining. All right, so we're going to go ahead. Um, another former guest, another friend of mine who's been on the show, Um Someone else who is highly uh, knowledgeable when it comes to the finances as well as tech. So, ladies and gentlemen, everybody in the chat, please welcome David Lee. I'm going to bring him in. Thank you for joining, sir. Hey, I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you having me on. But I'm going to file my formal complaint because you had me come on after... After bees, and I'm just like, well, shit, I ain't. <laughs> what I do wrong with my life? Because we still, we started out with Raytheon, I started out with Lockheed Martin. I'm like, well, wait a minute, hold up, I didn't retire. Like, um, but no, that's what's up. Like, bees for real. Like, that's that's I never heard that part about your story. That's dope. I'm so glad that you were able to capitalize on that because uh, I made a whole lot of mistakes when I started out. Because uh, yeah, but you know, that's life. Um, yeah. But a little bit about me. I've been in tech now just about 20 years. Um, I started out uh, comp sci at a North Carolina A&T Aggie Pride, uh, and I went straight into government contracting. So I worked for Lockheed Martin. I was a Beltway Bandit for a little bit, uh, doing different things for different intelligence communities. Uh, from there, went uh, private, worked with smaller consulting companies, and then um, I kind of moved out of uh, engineering and moved into partnerships, business development, and now director of product management. Uh, I run product for a, a small startup. And then um, outside of that, along the time, I've, I've kind of built up this passion to kind of help and give back. Um, throughout my career, there wasn't a whole lot of people that looked like me that was in tech. So I wanted to find ways to do that. So um, <coughs> online media platform, ebonyasset.com, we work on that, you know, kind of the for us, by us style, talking about mental health, financial empowerment, business success, things of that nature. So to give back all these gems and things so you can hear from people that look like us. So if you're looking at going down this path, you have like people you can relate to to hear from. That's me in a nutshell. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Thank you for joining. And then we have another one who who is a I guess you could call him a big time podcaster. Now, he just hit a milestone with his own show, uh, Textual Chatter. So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Henri Davis, also known as Textual Chatter. Yeah, I'm going to say sexual talk. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> welcome, sir. Welcome. What's going on, everybody? Just a brief intro about me. My name is Henri Davis, aka Textual Chatter, aka the host of the Textual Talk podcast. I've been in tech about 10 years now. Started my way from help desk all the way to now I'm doing cybersecurity for, you know, basically I'm in the fintech industry right now. Um, during, you know, my grind of trying to get into cybersecurity, it was pretty rough. So that, you know, once I got to the level where I'm at now, I decided I should give back. I'm a coach. I also released the ebook called The Textual Post to Breaking Into Cybersecurity. And yeah, I'm just ready, you know, to rock out because I'm pretty sure y'all have heard me talk enough. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, thank you. Thank you for joining. And last but not least, um, and we have two other guests. One of them will not be able to make it tonight. She's feeling a little under the weather. The other one is leaving another meeting and she should be with us shortly. But right now, the last guest we have, I'm sure we all know who she is. She is probably someone we all aspire to be. She is the only person that has V in front of her name. <laughs> um, I'm actually super grateful and excited to have her on the show because uh, I'm just exhausted just watching her social media with everything that she's been doing she's all over the place but she's here today so ladies and gentlemen everybody watching please welcome the one the only the mary galloway hey hi <laughs> i'm trying to be like all of these folks on, on the screen what you mean <laughs> what you I like ease, huh? <laughs> <laughs> So, Mary, thank you for joining. Like I said, I know you've been all over the place and you got and you just been jet setting and talking and prepping. So go ahead and just, you know, give a brief introduction as to who you are. Um, so I am Mary Galloway. I work for a company called Palo Alto Networks as a sales engineer um, on the Cortex Speedboat. So I sell all things automation digging into XDR, XOR, um, Expanse, all that good stuff. Uh, outside of that, I also run the Women's Society of Cyber Jitsu, where McKenna is also a member, and she's pretty awesome. So if you haven't talked to her, followed her, liked her, um, definitely check her out. And as she mentioned, we do a lot of trainings. We do a lot of stuff for women and girls, um, all that good jazz. Outside of that, I run a small bookkeeping business and cyber consulting company, um, like I said, super small, because I don't have a lot of time to do a lot of stuff. And then um, I teach, I drink wine, I make wine, I build Lego stuff, um, I craft, all kinds of great things. So that's me in a nutshell. Um, and you officially teach because you launched your LinkedIn learning course last week. So let's not forget about that. <laughs> which is fire, by the way. Forget yes, about that. Which is, yeah, which is a, a definitely a good one. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and do that again. So again, thank you to all of the thank you to all of you joining. Um, like I said, we're still waiting on one other guest, but when she gets in, I will bring her in as well. But I brought you all together here today because uh, I'm sure we've all been on that fun place we call InfoSec Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> And um, earlier in the year, I was, you know, doing my, my, my regular scrolling and, oh, Women in Linux is here. So, Tamika, hey. uh, click the link. Click the link. Click the link. To get you in here. Make sure we're good. Yep, we're, we should be all set. Okay, so uh, quick, quick rundown. So, earlier on in the year, we were doing our regular Twitter stuff and I caught JB... Henri and Diera, um, in a back and forth with some folks about this very topic about certifications, about you know how to make how, how to make a decent living in cybersecurity or in tech, and um, they really didn't want to hear what anybody had to say. We've been accused of being uh, cult members for the cult of Comtia. Uh, I've been called the gatekeeper a couple times because I told people that they actually had to act, you know, do the work. Um, and we just dealt with a whole bunch of nonsense. So I said, you know what, let's, let's all come together and have a talk about how to, how to make this money in tech and how to do it the right way. Uh, cause everybody can chase the bag, but it's, 
what you do after you get the bag and and how you manage it that will determine your longevity in this field and and with said bag um but one thing that kept popping up to in my head was um a lot of us if not all of us when growing up we we used to hear don't talk about how much money you make right especially if you grew up in certain areas where it was like that's considered bragging and then that makes you a target so why do you think it's so hard now in 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 the in the day of so in the days of social media and everybody talking about everything else that they're doing from their body count to whatever why is it still so hard to talk about money <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna let somebody go first <laughs> <laughs> I'll, it's a serious question. I, I'll jump off. I think for me, it, it does come back to kind of what you said for, for me, like upbringing, right? So I'm, I grew up in outside of Los Angeles as a kid, and um, it was just something you didn't really you didn't really talk about money a whole lot because you didn't want you didn't want them boys coming for you to try and take it. I mean, that's just that is what it is. And growing up, we didn't have a lot of it. So yeah. I think part of that was like, all right, I'm, I'm as I got older, I said, I'm gonna just kind of make my moves and, and do what I need to do and, and kind of keep it quiet. That's how kind of I was taught. But for me, I started coming out of that probably like mid 20s. And unfortunately, with some people, <clears throat> you would want to start talking about it. And you just you just got a lot of hate. And so it's like, okay, well, if for me, like if I grow up and I talk about it and I'm afraid somebody's gonna come take it for me, I get past that and now it's like, all right, I do wanna talk about it and, and talk about the numbers and help other people get it. And then you get a lot of hate for it. So then it's like, well, shit, I, I'm gonna just do me, right? I'm gonna just stay in my lane and do me and, and not talk about it. So I think there's a lot of that kind of still left over. And then I think now we're gonna get into a point where um, probably I said within the last 10 years, tech has become so broad, right? Before tech, even cybersecurity was this little niche within tech, but it was just this thing that was strictly kind of like, okay, engineers, nerds, like that's that's their path. And then over the last decade, we've seen it just kind of really, really open up towards such a broad thing. Like you can't have a company and not be a tech company. The moment you the moment you put on a website, you're a tech company, like it or not. The moment you decide to make payments, like I know I got fintech people in here. As soon as you decide to accept payments, guess what? You a tech company. So you can't even hide from it now. So it's such a broad thing now. I think hopefully it's 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 better to kind of talk about it and to be all the way real for people of color. We have to talk about it because there's so many things in this game that you don't know because it's not talked about. It's in these circles that you are not in and you don't have privy to. So you just running around like a high paid slave because you don't really know what you're doing and how everything else is going. Sorry, I've been drinking, y'all. So I probably. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, no, that's fine. That's fine. And for those who just noticed, we have our final guest of the show of this panel. Uh, you may know her from Women in Linux. You may know her from a lot of the talks that she gives, as well as the financial advice that she gives us. And she is also someone who I said I had to get have on the show. Um, Tamika Reed, ladies and gentlemen, let me get the round of applause for you. <laughs> So, so Tamika, what we're going to do is you can go ahead and give a, a quick rundown of who you are, and then mm -hmm. you can also get into the conversation of why you think it is so difficult or controversial to talk about money. Okay. Uh, I'm Tamika Reed, founder of Women in Linux. I've been uh, in the industry, uh, I guess you can say, in, in, in the industry in Linux and DevSecOps, oh, cloud security. Cloud security. Uh, is that me? Data center, so forth, um, for uh, 22 years, 21, 22 years, how you, however you want to look at that. Mm. Um, and uh, I also teach. Um, so one to answer your question about why is it, um, I guess, taboo and why it's important. I give you the taboo. Um, the taboo for me was I, I had been doing Linux administration for so long and just been in the industry, I guess you could say with my head down, that I just didn't even realize that I wasn't even working. Uh, I say I, I say when I moved to D.C. back in 2008 was probably the first time um, that I had actually met black people who were actually in tech 
And then uh, even to this day, I've never worked with any black people, with black women, I worked with black people, but no black women in on the side of Linux or so forth, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, why is it important uh, and why is it taboo? Uh, the, the hard part is, is when, again, I've heard some of the panelists say, that, you know, didn't want to get snatched up and so forth. <laughs> but the other part, the other part is, um, it was for me. It was um, if I did talk about it, um, it wouldn't necessarily always be considered bragging. Is people wouldn't believe me, right? Mm -hmm. So people wouldn't even believe that. And I get, I still get it now that a person that looked like you, a person that is of your skin color to even fathom making that type of money um, and whatever that type of money is, anything over a hundred thousand at that time. And so, and I, I would even get that from my mom, right? She was like, nobody's going to even pay you that kind of money. So I don't even, they just lying to you. And, and until I started including her on my offer letters and emailing her my offer letters, she didn't believe me, but now she does. So, <laughs> So it's just give you a, 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 you know, the idea of. That was basically like Mosh. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Respectfully. You know, respectfully. You know, go from there. But um, but no, I, I agree with 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 both you and David's points. Like you know, growing up, yeah, you don't you don't talk about what you got. I mean, I saw people get robbed for their sneakers. So, you know, so so can so just thinking about how much you know talking about oh I made this kind of money and and you know six figures six figures was a pipe dream you know six I, I never believed that you could make six figures unless you were like a doctor or a lawyer and when I moved into cybersecurity was when I started to like literally tiptoe like my first cybersecurity job but I at that point I think I was like eight to ten years in tech already but when i my first cybersecurity job it was like i was like right at the edge and i'm like okay i gotta i, I gotta i gotta step in a little bit further um but to your point um you either people didn't believe you people thought that you know that was it was a front like i've literally been told that i don't make money in tech i'm secretly ghost from <laughs> From power <laughs> um you know um and it got to a point where like dave david said I, I was just like well screw it i'm just not gonna say nothing and then maybe about a couple years ago um i said no nah, you know what i gotta start talking more about it because representation matters and to that point bees was one of the first people who i saw that looked like me that was like nah not only can you do it here's how to do it mm -hmm. and here's how to achieve those goals right. and to me that was like that was big because that was something that it was a it was a mindset thing that i saw on social media so again you're scrolling nonsense nonsense fuckery foolishness <laughs> whatever <laughs> and then you have someone like wait hold up oh she's talking about she's talking about enhancing and Ari's then and then Ari's jumping on and like yeah and then you can do this and funnel this and create and I'm like what I just wanted to do a blog and share it all you know what I'm saying so it was, it was all about changing the mindset so so with that bees um you know what what led to you deciding that you wanted to basically go out there and put yourself out there to change that mindset I mean for me it was like growing up it was never a taboo because I was always around people who wanted to get money, right? Like I'm from mm -hmm. I'm from Arlington, Virginia, the DMV, right? So everybody's black and the people who I saw, who I grew up around, they were all making good money because they were either federal government employees, government contractors, or they were overseas government contractors who just came back. So for me, it was like, it was never a taboo. It was just something that I felt like nobody was talking about. And the older generation, in my opinion, didn't talk about it because it was a taboo for y'all. But for us, the younger generation, like you said, we talk about everything. So to me, if you wanted to make money, you wanted to increase your income, like you need to be talking about it with other people because there's so many ways to make money. So I think in the black community, especially, is just like we just don't talk about um, sharing information enough 
to where we know all these different options to where we can make money, right? A lot of people never heard of overseas government contract until they saw me tweeting about it on Twitter. They never heard of it, but I knew about it because of where I'm from, right? So for me, that that was the whole thing. Um, I, my mindset was always to make a lot of money, right? So I've told this story plenty of times. I saw somebody come back from overseas, came back from Afghanistan. They bought a house all cash, car all cash. I got to do it. So that was my goal from 16 was to get overseas. So it was just something I knew I was always going to do. Hey. Um, but on social media, it's just like, no, nah, we can't talk about money. Right. Like even yeah. in person, like family, they're like, no, nah, we don't talk about money. And I just said, forget it. Like, I'm going to talk yeah. about money because this is this is how you get more. Right. This is how you get more. This is how you grow. This is how you get more information. Spread knowledge. There you hey, go. What years were you? Um, Did you start working for Raytheon? Uh, 2015. Okay, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, it's definitely. I agree with you. It's definitely a generational thing. Um, and it's it's interesting to hear your timeline, especially at 2015, because when I started out there it was right after the 9/11 Commission report. So I came out there like in 2003, and mm -hmm. that's when like for that sector it became the thing because they started hiring so many people to come in and start contracting. Yeah. And so from like 2004 to like 2010, it was like 400 people moving a day to the DMV area because all these contract jobs, all these contract jobs, all this work was there. And so it's interesting to hear your story because to then look about 2015 when you started, but to your point, you grew up, you had all these people that were like, this this is what they did. Yeah, right? that's, that's what we did. Yeah. Right. So that's, yeah. I mean, that, number one, that's, that's dope. And I'm glad that you had that. Um, I remember having opportunities to go overseas and I was like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> I should have went, but yeah. but the same thing. People were going overseas, but at the time that that they were going overseas, we were, we were at war. It was combat areas. I was like, yeah, I just want to, I just want to hack into this thing. I, I I'm a <laughs> bullets, so I'm not. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. See me, I didn't, I didn't care. Like, so it was like 2004, 04 through 06. I was still in like middle school at the time. Yeah, but I saw people coming back young black people coming back with all this money yep. and i was like i don't i don't really care what it is my dad he was in the air force so it was like all right whatever you know gotta go overseas i was already doing tech um when i got into high school so i was just like you know go overseas make this money if i have to go to iraq afghanistan all right i'll do that but there are ways to not have to go yeah. over there so i figured out how to do it without going to the you know war zones right and see, that I mean, was that, that was my thing for me. Like my first my first offer to go overseas was a war zone. I was, and and at that time, I'm married with kids, so I'm like, yeah, no, nah, I'm mm -hmm. I'm I'm not I'm not playing that game of double dutch there. I ain't coming back <laughs> from that. So, real quick, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna jump back and forth with the chat, but um, so how we're gonna break down this talk is I got it in three parts. So part one, we're gonna talk about getting the initial bag. So this is where we're gonna talk about, you know, certain things you can do, skills you can develop, you know, talking about certs and degrees and all of that, even the stuff that y'all don't necessarily wanna hear, we're gonna talk about that. And then part two, we're gonna talk about what you can do to use one source to generate other sources. And then uh, we'll talk about investing crypto, even though we don't really want to talk about crypto right now. It's a little bloodbath going on. Real estate. Um, I know Tamika has a couple things that she wants to talk about. And then part three, which, you know, probably should have put somewhere in the middle, but I re really wanted to uh, put it there because I want people to leave home, leave it, leave this with that part of information. You know, certain things you can do to build your own, but also to spread your wealth and stay disciplined. So, you know, Mary, I know Mary has the bookkeeping thing. What she's doing. I know David got his stuff going on. So I specifically picked this panel for those reasons because I've seen all of you at one point or another talk about every single topic that we're going to talk about. So, um, so with that, uh, again, thank you to the chat. Let me just make sure that there aren't anything in here that we're missing. So uh IPR says we don't talk about money in black families because people feel entitled to it and they also pocket watch. Mm -hmm. That is true. That, 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 that very is. true. <laughs> the black tax. <laughs> you got they it. Call it. <laughs> right, right. What you say, JB? You got it. What up? Yeah. What up, cousin? Wait, who? That, who? That money. Talking about money is only frowned upon in the black community. But that, but, and I think it goes back to that first point where, yeah, you don't want to talk about it because now you, all, all of a sudden it's like, oh, you got it. And and you know whether it's overtly or covertly, where it's not kind of Nick. You know, you realize. Paying for a lot of things lately, and no one's really reaching for their wallet when we go out anymore. 
you know, <laughs> what's going on or or you loan or you loan money to people and then it takes a lot longer for them to get it back because like oh you ain't gonna be worried about it um that's so right. yeah you definitely you do that. yeah you, you gotta know. do be your own bank right there that's when you gotta hit them with the five percent five percent no eight <laughs> percent so majestic logic is employees talking about wages and salary hurts the corporate games they play yeah, they and 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 I know I'm probably gonna piss off some. We're gonna piss off some people because they don't nef- they don't want us having these conversations. They they try to tell you that, you know, don't don't dis- don't disclose your salary to other people. No, nah, we need to talk about it because um, you have people who literally work the same job but realize, man, I have more experience than you, but you're getting paid like 20, 30 k more than me, and you're trying to figure yeah. out why why that yeah. is. Uh, Travell says people are more likely to talk about what they have and what they can buy rather than the actual experiences they're having with money. Again, these are the different conversations that you have to have about the mindset. So with that, um, you guys, every, you guys and girls and everybody know the rules by now. You can ask anything, just keep it clean and keep it respectful. I mean, you know, you know I don't think you want to smoke with anybody on this panel right now. So <laughs> I don't even need to give you the disclosure. So with that, we're going to go into part one, getting the initial bag. So, a lot of times people come and they say, you know, oh man, I want to jump into tech and make six figures. And it's like, listen, that's un I'm not gonna say it's unrealistic because I've seen people I've seen people do it. Mm-hmm. I've, seen people, I've seen people get lucky and I've seen people cheat their way to it and try to make six figures in six months and then they try to turn around and act like they're the gurus. Um, but like I said, <laughs> we'll get before, laid off. Get 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 laid off in six months and then get blackballed because now everybody knows that you lied on your resume. But um, the one thing I try to tell the people I talk to, which again is the cause for controversy that that so many of us have had, is that we're like, you got to actually buckle down and learn these skills, and not only learn the skills, get the hands-on experience. So with that, so with that being said, um, we're going to start with uh, Deira, and then we're going to go to McKenna because we haven't heard much from her yet. Um, what are some skills that you can get to get started in tech? I think the first thing you really need to focus on once you kind of figure out what you want to do, whether that be cyber or cloud or networking, you really need to understand the fundamentals of what your job is because all of the new technologies just build upon the fundamentals that the technologies were built on back in the eighties and nineties. Um, And I find a lot of people, when they haven't solidified their knowledge in that, when they just kind of study to pass the cert versus studying to actually understand what they're trying to do, they end up getting left behind. So yeah, you might pass the CCNA, but you know, when you get your first job, you're forgetting certain concepts because you weren't trying to actually learn the material. You were just trying to pass the test. Talk about Um, it. And I tweeted about that and a lot of people called me gatekeeping, but like, I just don't understand how you're going to call yourself, you know, how are you going to be a cloud engineer and you don't understand networking or Linux or any of those fundamental concepts that the cloud is built upon. Um, And I think there's this air of, especially on Twitter, there's this air of, well, I did it, so can you, because it hasn't caught up to them yet until you're (laughs) leading a large scale project and you're looking at everything like, what the fuck does any of this mean? (laughs) Hey, listen. (laughs) Who can I talk? You beat me to it. (laughs) (laughs) I had to set it up for you, man. I had to set it up for you. Oh, I appreciate it. I appreciate it. But 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 that's that's facts because you know you have people who don't have the knowledge right and i i keep thinking back to the person on linkedin who was begging for help because someone told them they just needed to get their um aws uh solutions architect and had no experience (laughs) oh i remember that and Mm. had no experience and could not understand why they couldn't and then and had the nerve to go on linkedin and say I'm looking for an entry level cloud architect role. And I'm pretty sure that person still got to this day still being laughed off of the platform. Like I, I someone was like, yo, that someone saying they want to be an entry level architect is like saying I am a surgeon with no experience. Like you have to know. <laughs> 
you have to know what you're doing. You gotta so, hit him like um, this. I was doing Joan of Arc in my past life. <laughs> <laughs> But but unfortunately, you have you have these fly by night tech folk. I'm not even going to call them influencers because I'm actually going to try to take that word back because in a way we're all tech influencers in on this panel. So I'm going to try to stay away from that word in a negative light. But you know you have these fly by night people who you know they got a few followers and you know someone told them that their content was great and they may have gotten a job and now all of a sudden. They think they can put out a, a guide or some type of piece of content and say, you know, this is how I did it. So, um, but then when you put them in front of a keyboard, um, another guest who couldn't be here tonight, Tyrone Wilson, um, I keep coining his phrase, the keyboard don't lie, mm. right? You you can talk about everything that you have or everything that you, you think you know, but if they put you in front of that keyboard and say, hey, spin up this VPC for me or get root on this machine for me. All of a sudden you're uh uh and then all of a sudden now now you're called the gatekeeper because you're 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 challenging them. So McKenna, seeing that um I guess you could say you're fairly new to the field. Um, you know, what what did you do or what what did you run into? And did you run into some of those times where I guess the temptation of man, maybe I could go this route because this is what this person was saying. Um, you know, how that how was your experience in, in getting into the field? So, I mean, for me, I, I did not find the Twitter space until well in the industry. Um, and so for me, I didn't have that like big head coming in and be like, oh, I can just fool these people into giving me a job. Like for me, it really was about learning the skills. And, you know, I think a lot of people try to push you to go straight certification first, like, oh, just go ahead and get like your security plus and get this and get that. Um, but I think what a lot of things people miss is like doing projects or even understanding what the job title, like what that job even entails. And so I tell a lot of people who are interested coming in, it's like before you even say this is what I want to do, connect with others that are already in the industry. Ask them to sit down and explain the skills, explain the day to day, which is why it's so great with like, you know, the Women's Society of Cyber Jitsu, where we do like career conversations, because that's giving people like an inside look into what's actually um, and then you can really build your roadmap from there. Um, I know like something uh, and we were, you know, we were talking about like, how do you even figure out what you want um, or what kind of role to go into? There are so many reports, so much information, just like blog posts every year about what are the hardest um, positions to fill. I know like Fortinet just dropped one about the cybersecurity skill gap and how they're struggling to find like cloud security engineers or SOC analysts. And these are like some of the most required or the hardest roles to fill right now. So it's like, if you're trying to go in it for the bag, then go that way. But if you're really looking to make a, a lasting career, um, start start really building from the foundations. Like Diara said, it's like, you need to know the fundamentals. And no, it's not sexy. It's not, not always the most interesting thing. Like, listen, I still like want to pass out every time I have to go through networking, but... <laughs> required you know it's like i have i'm going to be a good engineer and so um like for me it was really just like kind of tinkering like i was a tinkerer at first i did all these projects every time i was like what the heck is this i looked for a youtube video to like walk me through it or have a project to do so like that's what i try to suggest to a lot of people that are coming in it's like if you're in it just for the you know the quick cash best of luck I'm probably not the person to talk to, but if you actually care about this, like I'm willing to tell you what the day-to-day -day job looks like. I'm willing to connect you with people that can give you more information. And I'm going to tell you straight up, do projects. If you're going to do a cert, fine, but do projects, get some hands-on experience. And if you don't know where to start, there are plenty of people that can help you. Yep. I'm, I'm going to sit back. If anybody else wants to chime in real quick. Yeah, so, I, I was I was actually laughing when she said she was like you can get on YouTube because it wasn't no YouTube when I started. I'm probably no, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wasn't no YouTube. You better hit these user forms and hope don't nobody catch you. Out. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
right? Um, but I do agree. Um, I, um, I always start with the foundation uh, for me, you know, I, I don't, I don't know. Can we brag on here or can we? Is, is it's not bragging if you get it. I don't know. I want to be offensive to everybody. So, so I was thinking about it last. I was thinking about it last night when I was teaching um, my class for the RHCSA, and uh -huh. I thought about when I came in to um, when I moved to DC. You know, two thousand eight was the recession, right? Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, and I was like, man. I was like, is Linux recession proof? If is, is knowing Linux recession proof? And I'm gonna have to say it is. I've never, and I tell this to my students, is you know, not to like shun anything, but it's just it is one of those skills that has been a lifetime skill set for me. Um, so I know if I don't ever go out and learn anything else, I know for a fact that I can go sit down and work at the help desk or data center or what have you. Mm -hmm. um, and along with that, when I say understanding Linux, Linux holds so much underneath the covers from security to networking to understanding how to secure operating system. It is just one of those things that you have earned, that, that you take with you as a fun to, fundamental and build upon that. And if you want to go into networking, you can. If you want to get into cloud, you can. If you just want to be a security engineer, you can. It is just one of those things that is kind of like if you want to get into platform engineering, it is the platform in which you build upon in order to make your career and, and go. It, it, if you want to say go get the bag, fine. If you don't, then don't. But it is it is up to you where you want to go with it if you learn it. And see, um, and see, I, I say to learn the skills and then get the bag because, I mean, at the end of the day, none of us are doing this for free, right? None, right. none of us are doing it to be underpaid and overworked. And you you definitely have to. And and to, to uh, your point, when I started, yeah, there wasn't there wasn't YouTube or internet stuff like that either. And, and I wasn't the type to go on forum sites because I would take what I learned and try to find a person and figure out where they stayed. So I, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was, I was a different person back in the day, but, um, but yeah, so, you know, but, but yeah, I got I you, mind, is, <laughs> yeah, I got you exactly. But um, I see a lot of people talking about, um, you know, any links to any blog. So to my panel, uh, to Tamika's point, uh, if you want to flex and brag, please put your links in here. This is why we're here again. Put out your information and get let these people reach out to you and 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 get some of the knowledge that they probably can't get, you know, because we're we're on a limited time here. But to the point of blogging and creating content, I think in today's day and age, especially in the tech field, um, I think that bragging to a sense is actually very helpful. Not bragging like oh look at the car i got or look how much money i i got but as far as marketing yourself so making content podcasts blog posts youtube videos you know help it, creating content to actually help people because a lot of times when they go if if they if you do make it to the interview process they're looking your name up and they're going to find that content so with that i'm going to go to jb Henri and then bees about the about the content creation part of things and and how that can be helpful so jb i'm gonna start with you because uh, you can also talk about certifications as well since sure. you've definitely been like gathering all the certifications <laughs> like you're some type of freaking infinity stone sure. yeah yeah so, 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 uh, so i do want to hop back to that real quick as far as like getting the bag initially and stuff like that and one thing that you kind of have to realize uh, is like, why is a company going to pay that amount of money for you? Right. So if, if you don't have that understanding, you just think you're just going to get that dollar value without actually having some type of value that you're providing back for the company. It's hard enough at a hundred thousand. Then when you're looking at salaries of 200,000 or 300,000 or 400,000, the amount of value that you have to provide at that point is, is quite a bit. So mm -hmm. keeping that in perspective, along with the skill sets that you're building as your career evolves um, kind of probably will 
keep you grounded and more realistic instead of just expecting, hey, I got this one cert, I have no experience, and somebody should pay me, you know, 120000 So uh, getting back to this question, though, so you're talking about how to market yourself and uh, blogs and content and stuff like that. I, I think that's actually ties into uh, one of those great ways of demonstrating your skills. So that's a question that folks often ask me is when they're trying to get in uh, and they aren't, they don't necessarily have all that background of working different jobs and stuff like that. Content creation, demonstrating the things that you're doing, whether that's blog posts, GitHub repos, YouTube videos, graphics, anything that you can do to put together that is reinforcing the things that you've learned. And then I think doubly, it's actually helping other people within the community. Uh, Cause you might be seeing things from perspective that maybe they haven't, maybe they're struggling with certain aspects of different types of technology and the way that you explain it or uh, the way that you built something out might make something kind of click for them. And then that will help them along their journey as well. I think those are all, you know, really important things. And then as you kind of continue into your career, gain more and more experience, then you're able to, you know, expand that out. Of course, that ends up becoming kind of a difficult balance once you end up getting a whole lot more responsibilities with your job and trying to keep up with content creation. And, and I think, uh, I mean, I know that Davin, you've run into this and I know that some other folks have as well, as far as trying to find that right balance between the work that you have to do, taking care of your family, other responsibilities, and then the internal responsibilities that you feel towards your community and providing useful knowledge to them and weighing that against, you know, how much room do you really have left in your cup at the end of the day after you've done all these other things? Mm -hmm. um, and everybody has a different answer for that. And I think in order to be like the most impactful with that, you have to do a lot of soul searching to kind of figure out where that balance is, what's realistic. Um, and then just try to continually do checkups with yourself to be like, okay, emotionally, mentally, physically at this point, can I still continue to put out content in the amount that I was before? Um, but I think, you know, most people, even though Twitter's a shit show <laughs> for the most part, yeah. um, there's a lot of people out there that really care about the information that you put out. I mean, obviously right. with the, the amount of people here that are watching the stream and that, you know, ingest a lot of the different content that a lot of us make, um, those people who are kind and graceful people will be completely understanding of that moment when you're like, Hey, I got some stuff going on. I need to step back. I appreciate that you like my content. Hopefully, you know, once I recharge a little bit, I'll be able to put stuff back out. But if not, then, you know, we're still all part of the same community and we're still working towards the same goals. See, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm going to go on a rant in a second, but I'm not going to do it just yet. Um, but you're absolutely right. And I'm going to be honest with you. Sometimes it does play a role in whether or not for me personally, do I feel like creating content? Do I feel like actually going up? Because you already have to deal with. A, a, a lot of us go through this. You already have to deal with some of the, I guess you call them the natural trolls, right? Mm -hmm. the, the the people who are out there, the tech bros who are out there who feel like you need to justify your existence to be commenting or posting on something, right? So you're already mentally prepared to deal with that nonsense. But then to, to have to hear all the naysayers or the people who, because they don't agree, because you're telling them, Wait, I have to. I actually have to study. I actually have to. I actually have to know shit, and then and, and the fight with all of that is exhausting, right? And 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 I mean, even in Twitter spaces, like I haven't been on a real Twitter space in a yeah. while because it's just you just go on there and it's just like I'm gonna say something that's gonna get me canceled. So let me just hurry and log the hell off before I get in trouble. And like even my wife, my wife sometimes is like, "Well, why do you even put up with?" It? I'm like, "Because there's got there's some people there who I can help." Mm -hmm. But to your point, JB, sometimes it's like, do I have it? Do I even have it in me to, to do that? So um, with that, so uh, Henri, you've gotten in a few Twitter tiffs. So how do you stay motivated to market yourself and to help people? Sure thing. So it's funny enough that you said this, like my pin tweet is probably like one of the last big uproars. I started saying like people want to 
get six figure tech jobs without the six figure tech skills. And I was called a gatekeeper for that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> honestly, I think at the beginning of the year, I said I was going to kind of peel back from Twitter and I mostly use Buffer or whatever other sites I use to kind of use third party tools to like tweet on there to where like I'm not on there a lot because you'll find yourself getting pulled into a lot of BS, a lot of people not own nothing. And so I decided, you know, I'm going to focus my time on like getting better help of my, my clients, really getting better at content creation. That goes down from like some of the stuff I got back here and like the studio office setting, camera presence, better equipment to record my podcast. So I've kind of channeled that energy there. And the way that I keep going is I keep going because I think I focus on like my content, knowing like I'm putting out good stuff. That uh, what Rick Ross once said, like, you know, the container with the most content moved the slowest. So I haven't really been worried about getting, you know, the praise or anything like that. And I just try to schedule everything out because, like, JB was talking about, like, it's super hard. Like, my girl, like, you know, she's got the kids in there right now and she's always on me, but I'm always busier, you know, on a computer. So it is hard. I, I try to schedule stuff out and maybe record, like, content. Uh, two or three videos sometimes at a time that way I could just edit them later and then you know try to spend time you know when I can but I, I just try to put like all this work in now so eventually I'll probably be really hands off with it like the next you know two years where I'm probably only recording not editing and not doing like none of that stuff and you know I, that's kind of like the way that where I do it and also the benefit of like me being in content creation over the last two years has you know helped me meet a vast network of people like you know you guys on this panel like you know different people i just ran into to where it's now like i see how the game is played like when i was you know first starting off or meeting people that got jobs say oh yeah uh, i go to church with so-and-so you know the managers you know hire people you go to church with now i could do the same things like oh oh you need a job oh yeah they want you they hire him you know he's gonna hire her she knows she's doing so content creation is like helping me out in that vein also just getting you know opportunities, you know, that I probably wouldn't have got have, I never, you know, got it. And that's kind of some of the stuff that keeps me going as well. I just, you know, also I've been getting messages and like emails. Some people get jobs and, you know, people say like, I love your channel. So I, I do it for those people. Everybody else who like don't matter, I really don't care about what they say because <laughs> I know what I say, you know, makes sense. Yeah. Right. Right. So, um, Mary, Tamika, Bees, and I mean, Mary, you don't do so much with the content. I mean, you do, you create live content. Like you, you do your talks and stuff like that and you do some content, but have you all also dealt with, you know, some of the bullshit? I know, I know there's a lot of stuff that y'all have to deal with just being women and then being black women in the space, but how do you navigate through all of that when you're trying to market yourself and, 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 you know, put yourself out there to, to whether get either you're getting these jobs or to help people get these jobs. So any of you ladies can go first. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go with this. They say numbers don't lie, skills don't lie, right? Mm -hmm. So so when, when it comes down to um, dealing with uh, BS at work or whatnot, the way I look at it is same way I got this one, same way I get another one. That's just my philosophy. Um, I just don't deal with a lot of unnecessary stuff. You know, you have to have thick skin, sure, uh, but they gotta have thick skin too. Cause you know, my the bullets you come, you shoot at me, I'm I'm shooting them right back at you. They gonna bounce off of me. They hurt you <laughs> more than who. Right? So uh, when it comes down to any obstacles and stuff like that, that's why I always preach like make sure you get your skills up, right? So you can have the ability to move how you want to move. Are you going to run into people that are gatekeepers? Are you going to run into people that don't like you? Hell, people don't even like you in your own damn family. So, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like like what you, what you what you going to do? You going you either you going either you going to sink or swim. I per, I prefer to I, I prefer to thrive. So I don't know about anybody else, right? So you see all the you see all the numbers out there. You see the the the, the checks that are being cut. I I just showed on my channel the other day jobs that are paying from two hundred fifty to six hundred thousand. A job paying a million. I'm I don't have time to worry about somebody that that don't like me because I don't <laughs> like the Python script right. 
<laughs> right? Right? We're just, we're, just not, we're just not at that point, right? We're, we're at, like, and, and, and forgive me for my mad rant, we're at the point now as Black people where we don't have time to worry about what somebody thinks that we're making or the amount of money that we're making if our wealth is supposed to be zero in 2053. Mm. We just don't have that kind of time. So what, what mm. are you, you mad at somebody because they, they make 125 and the other one make 160? Okay, well, how can you make 160? How can you make 180? How can you make 280? What's going to be your next step? What are you going to leave behind for your family? What about your wealth? What about your estate planning? What you gonna do with that? Like we gotta, we can. You, it's so many things I could go on about to be worried about if the person didn't like me because I picked out a L at the bar. I ain't got time for that. <laughs> what go. she said. <laughs> <laughs> what she said. Yeah, I don't create content, but I'd like to. I just don't have time, right? Um, but early in my career, I was always concerned about what other folks think. I think now at this point, I'm just like, I'm getting older. Um, I'm 25 in air quotes, um, <laughs> but I'm getting older. And it's just like, I don't have time to deal with, with that stuff. And I've grown thick skin over the years. Uh, most folks don't mess with me. I don't know why, but most folks don't really mess with me. Um, that's because you got a whole legion that would that would. That's probably oh, true. But I didn't have this legion ten years ago, right? Okay. So I've been in the industry for a long time, but I didn't have this group back then. Yeah, I have it now, but but even still, you know, folks don't. I, I'm I'm the kind of person that keeps my head down, stays in the background, does whatever I need to do, and then keep it moving. Because at the end of the day, I'm trying to be like, be like a bees here and retire at in the next five years. So <laughs> I get time to worry about the the stuff back here, the noise. And and bees, I know with, with the stuff that you got, I mean, you market yourself on social media. So I know it got to come with, with its fair share of nonsense. Oh yeah. All, all the time, all the time. But I, you know, on Twitter, I mean, I, I can't see anything from people who don't follow me basically. Um, and I, I feel like if you're trying to get an attack, I wouldn't even really worry about content creation as much, right? Mm -hmm. Unless you're just trying to like document your journey. I feel like you should focus on getting the skills, right? Like I feel like probably everybody here um, who's been in tech or who's who's been in tech for a long time, when you got into tech, there really was no like tech content creators. Like people were either just documenting what they knew or sharing what they learned. Um, but nobody was really trying to be a content creator. I think you just, just focus on the skills, get your search, get your degrees, and then go and try to get the bag. I mean, I think content creation, that's that's something else, right? Like you can get paid for being a content creator and not even have a tech job. So, yes, like, it, I mean, I, I don't see why anybody who's trying to get into tech would focus on content creation first. No. Not at all. We got to know tech to focus on it, right? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. I, I tell I tell folks you got it. You got to know it to talk about it, or you got to know it enough to talk about your journey, right? You can't. No one's no one's going to believe you if you're like, yeah, I know about. I don't know. I know about PCP IP, but you can't speak to subnetting or the ports or whatever, you know, so you got to know you, you, there's definitely some knowledge you have to go, um, go with before you, before you really start creating the content. And I think, catch my little finger, baby. Go, 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 go ahead. <laughs> um, so everybody has said like, you gotta, you gotta know the skills. Right. And, and that's absolutely a thousand percent true. And I want to break down a little bit why. So my background, I got a comp sci degree. And I'm not saying you have to have a comp sci degree to get into tech. You don't. Some of the some of the baddest programmers that I know in security architects, I know have philosophy degrees. But here's what you need to understand and why it's so important to know the skills and the principles. Because just getting whatever you're learning, if you want to become an AWS cloud architect, you go past it. OK, now you know what to do. But if you don't understand the, the fundamentals of what it's actually doing, then when you have to actually fix something or figure out why something's broken, because that's where that's where you earn this six figure salary that everybody want to be chasing. It's not because you know how to administer something. You can set some shit up. Anybody can do that. Matter of fact, we're getting AI programs. that got to do that. Most of this stuff is automated anyway. Right. So I'm not going to pay you six figures to do that. 
And I'm speaking from somebody who for the last five years has been at a direct deliver and hiring people. What I'm going to pay you for is when a customer is calling me because they fucked up their AWS script and don't know what they're doing and don't know how access got in. I need you to go in there and figure out how they configured it, why they configured it, why it was wrong, and then go fix it. You can't do that if you don't actually understand what you're looking at. And the other part of it is when you're looking at this, if you actually want to have a career and get real life changing money, if you understand what if you understand the skills of what you're doing as a comp sci major, you can throw any programming uh, language at me and I can program it. I don't care if you created it tomorrow. I guarantee you I can program it. You know why? Because I know the theory of computing. I know how all this works at the end of the day is zeros and ones down to the electrons and how you put together the circuits and how this works. That's what everything is built on. So it doesn't matter what you throw at me. I can figure that out. If you don't know that, you can't do that. And that's how you last and stay in here. Now, if you just want to come in and be the hottest thing and learn Google and learn Microsoft or whatever, cool. And that's going to last you maybe three, five years. Because when I tell you this shift changes every, every freaking year, fine. Go in and go get your six-figure job now. But then two years from now, when I'm coming back and say, hey, I need you to go learn this, now what you going to do? And this is why I'm so passionate about this stuff. Because it's not gatekeeping. We'll be trying to tell your stupid ass is how to get in the game and stay in it. Period. But you want to know we gatekeeping is because you don't want to go put in the work. And I guarantee you, anybody, you can ask anybody this panel, they will pick a time when they were learning how to do this. It was a whole lot of 10 hour, 12 hour days trying to figure out what something was, grinding, learning skills, making mistakes, doing it over again. And the people that you out here following and taking this advice from, they telling you how we got this six figure job. What they're not telling you is it took them three years to get there and what they was doing in three years and how hard they was grinding. All you see is a snapshot that, oh, I did this and now I make six figures. Or they didn't tell you that they was working at a certain place. They got in good with their manager. Then their manager went somewhere else and said, oh, I'm going to go hire you over here. They don't want to tell you about that part. We going to tell you about that part because I'm going to tell you that's exactly how it works. I'm not paying you six figures if you have no value to me when shit hits the fan and I can depend on you. Because when you get to a certain level, as you go up an executive, and John hit on this earlier, the more money you make, the more value and impact you need to have to the business. Let's back up and think about it. If I'm a business owner, I have a system and I'm hiring these employees to provide value. I'm going to value more of the employees that have more of an impact, which means what? It's less on me as the owner of the business. That's why I created a business. Not because I want to work, because I want to empower you to go work. So if I hire John and John can get more out of B's and Kim, then great. Then I don't have to worry about it because I got John. So I'm going to pay John more so I can go home and go to sleep and I can cash in my RSUs when we go, when we go public and I can sleep at night. That's why I'm paying John. I'm paying John three hundred thousand dollars so I can make four point five million. Y'all got to understand how this game works and why that money is getting paid out. You ain't gonna get that a, a, a certificate. Y'all see my name? Put some respect on it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say, good night, lady. Good night, everybody. <laughs> I mean, it's just it's 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 how it works. And I, I, I got there's too many. Orders. There's too much money out here for all of us to make. And it's is what what is better. A lot of y'all spoke about it earlier. Like when we start, when I started, right. There was no YouTube. I couldn't go find this stuff. I had to go grind the hard way. Now, right, if you could take the collective from all of our experiences, even like and especially bees and go, OK, you want to get into tech right now between YouTube and like all this stuff that's out there, like the free game that you can go learn and just build your you can build your own <laughs> Linux security box for like nothing. And the for stuff free. that you can learn that you can walk into an interview and go, yeah, I want to be this administrator. And you can say, matter of fact, let me show you how I would configure this for you. And you can learn all of that for free. Like mm -hmm. we are trying to tell you why you should focus on the skills so you can get a job and actually keep it. And when we get to later to talk about what to do with this so you can be like bees, because I got to pick up some stuff too. I just made mistakes earlier. Once you get <laughs> that bag and how you invest in and start creating another passive income. Well, we're trying to get to that if you start preaching. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I've been drinking, man. I've been drinking. I've been drinking. Where's your Beyonce music, Gavin? Come on. Uh, uh, on YouTube? Yes. You write it? No. no oh, yeah, no I guess man. you're right. You're right. You're right. So, you just got to uh, put it in the description and say uh, who the music by. Only right. 60 seconds. You'll be exactly. good. Exactly. <laughs> Listen. Well, um, damn. 
So <laughs> <laughs> no, but but uh, all right. So serious, we're gonna get to we're gonna get to this real quick. So uh, Grumpy Philosopher asks, "What do you believe is the lifespan for this flood of people flocking to tech solely focused on salary?" From my perspective, many people enter this industry with neither a plan nor a drive to become a subject matter expert, thus will lead to their quick demise. So uh, I'm gonna answer that with what Diera said because. I know Henri said he had a, a, a pin tweet that was um, controversial, but Harris mm -hmm. said one earlier in the year and she was like Nostradamus with it, <laughs> with, with hers. And then we're going to go to Mary. So, so Dara, please share, share your, share your insight. So earlier this year, I said that in about uh, 12 to 18 months, we were going to see all these people who ran out and got these high level certifications. I'm talking CISSP, AWS Solution Architect. These were all their first tech certs. And we were gonna see them burn out very quickly because they were not learning the fundamentals. They were just running with what the uh, six month experience tech Twitter gurus were marketing, Yay. telling them to go get CISSP, telling them to get these high level VM certifications. All of this stuff, skipping all of the fundamental stuff, and they were running out and getting it. And then they might luck up because they, you know, lied on their resume or, you know, bought somebody else's resume and put their name on it, get a job, and then you're going to burn out. That's a because thing. You can't keep up. That is a thing. That's a thing. That is a thing. That's a thing. Oh, you forgot about people and interviewing for other people too. That, that, okay. I'm selling my resume for anyone who wants. It's twelve hundred dollars. Hey, me I'm like, y'all selling resumes out here? What else y'all doing? Like, yeah, there was a very, um, a very uh, large government adjacent company um, that was Jason. looking for engineers, and they received five of the same resumes with different names. <laughs> They didn't change anything but the name. So that you is even, the thing. You ain't even change it so the teacher wouldn't tell the difference? <laughs> nope. That's lazy. So, so was that a resume? Someone who was running a resume service was just... Do, like, did they pay for somebody to, to do that? And it, that was more the fault of the resume writing service than the individual? No, because they were able to pretty much find the person on LinkedIn whose information they copied. Mm. And it was a group of people. So what they oh, think okay. is going on is somebody's Downloading people's information, slapping, you know, they take John's resume, slap Davin's name on it. Davin goes. And if the person who's interviewing isn't super technical and they can, you know, throw out a few buzzwords, they get the job. And then mm -hmm. by 30 days in, they're struggling because they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, you see them all the time in the Slack groups. Like, how do I do mm -hmm. this? I need this for my job. I'm not yeah, I, I, I saw somebody in the chat. Are, though. I saw somebody in the chat earlier ask kind of like what what's going to be the impact of all these people who are jumping in the tech just for the salary and not to actually know the skills and how to do the job. Um, and I think we'll see a lot more of that. Right. People just buying mm -hmm. resumes, lying on their resumes, uh, just really just trying to get the job and last there as long as possible. So, I mean, and it's not sustainable long term. Which, right. You're not going to last. Which is also going to exacerbate the problem that it is right now which is why there is some issues on the hiring. So when that happens, then what that's gonna force the, the project managers and the owners to do is say, I need more experience, I need this, I need that, which is gonna force the recruiters and then go, I need an entry level job with 10 years experience. And so you get these stuff and then people are gonna be playing, I can't get in, I can't get in. And it's gonna keep rotating around itself. Like this is why this is happening. There's a skills gap because we need the people, but it's like, because these people get in and they don't know how to do the job, then understand this. The reason why there is a skills gap is because you've got project managers out there who need resources. Security for the longest time has never got the funding it needed. Now, all of a sudden, it gets the funding it needs. Still does it. <laughs> fighting for it. And so it's like, I got to do the, the job of five people with three. So I'm willing to pay for it because I need you to produce right now. And then when you don't produce what it costs me to go and get somebody else, just it, it's costly. So that's where the, the gap is. And so that's why these, these managers are asking, it's like, I don't have time. I would love to take an entry level person, but I don't got time to hold your hand and teach you. I need you to hit the ground and be running because we're already behind, right? And that, again, this is stuff that people don't understand why this is set up this way, right? So you're thinking, well, they should just pay me because it's an entry level because they need, yeah, we need the service, but we need right. you to know what you're freaking doing because when you walk into a team of three, like you can't bring that team down. Boy. I can't you on a team with two seniors and then that senior is going to burn the hell out and I lose them because you don't know what you're doing. And this is why... Also, go, go ahead. Go ahead. 
Uh, I was also going to say um, there was a big debate on Twitter a while ago, like, does tech need to be your passion or can you just be in it for money? And I said, I don't care if you're here because you love networking security, you dream about it, or if you're just here because you need the money to fund another business that you're actually passionate about. I just need you to know what you're doing mm-hmm. because nothing is worse than you get somebody they claim they're a subject matter expert in something. If you're not a subject matter, matter expert, be honest. Say, you know, I only know this at a surface level, but I'm willing to learn more. But if you come in and you've marketed yourself as an expert, you said you built all of these things, and we get on a project, and now I'm on a 16-hour troubleshooting call because you fucked something up, <laughs> I don't. I, I have no support for you. And I'm going to be at management like this person got to go. You're making more work for the rest of us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so two things, and then we're gonna get we're gonna jump to the next question because I don't know if anybody has a hard stop at seven thirty. But um, so Lunaire says, "Have any of you guys built up into tech from nothing, or did you guys just have every opportunity in life and education?" <laughs> I don't know. I don't know no. if that's a serious question. No, no. Is that a troll? Yeah, I, 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 I don't. I don't <laughs> I don't even know if I should even dignify that one with an answer, but but real quick, no. Mm, no. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm still playing catch up on the salary now because for years I had to take, I felt like I had to take whatever was given to me. So, Same. no. So, 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 so okay. absolutely not. All right. <laughs> and, um, but now let, I'm I think still, you, should ask, you should probably put this next question up there. Which one? The one you said King 318. 318. Yeah. yeah, put that up there. So why do you guys give us the beliefs that we don't need degrees to get a job? Because you, no you, you don't. But no All one right. gave you belief either. It, That's the thing. You don't need a degree. You, you need don't, the skill. You don't need a degree, right? And, to, and, and, and here's where I respectfully disagree with Dara to a certain extent. You don't necessarily need to have like a passion where this is, I, I live for this shit. I eat, sleep, breathe, cybersecurity or tech. But you definitely have to have passion or, or, or a strong enough interest to keep you going when, right. yes. when things get difficult. Now, do you need a degree? I don't have a degree. Never. When I decided I was moving into tech, I actually made a decision to say I wasn't going into college because I didn't want the student loans. And I wanted to do something that could produce results a lot faster than a four-year degree because I was a new father and I was trying to get my family out of the situation that we were in. So I started looking at ways I could get certifications. And then when I was getting the certification, I had an instructor who was lucky enough to tell, I was lucky enough to have an instructor to tell me that piece of paper don't mean shit without some hands-on. So then I started learning the hands-on stuff. So I'm working two jobs. I'm working at Circuit City at the fire dog bench, getting that hands-on experience. I'm taking jobs at call centers, at rehab centers, anywhere that will take me to learn this stuff to get this hands-on skills. You do not need a degree. Will a degree possibly help you or later on when you want to move into management? Absolutely. But do you need it to get to get to get your foot in the door no and honestly there's a few people who jump into who jump into tech saying well i have a four-year degree but i have no experience so now i feel like you should give me this money based off of the money i spent to get my degree and i will hire this person with more of it more experience and certifications before someone fresh out of college so Mm -hmm. there you go so so i i would say also to that like it it depends on on what you're comparing there, right? Because if you're comparing somebody, two people with the same level of expertise, and one of them has a degree in, and one doesn't, there's the potential that the other person has some other skills that they're bringing that the other person doesn't. But you don't know that until you actually like flesh that out in an interview process, because the other person who doesn't have the degree might have a different career that they're coming from that might have other skill sets that are that are equally as valuable. Uh, my perspective on that. So I have an undergrad degree. I have a grad degree. I have graduate certificate. I, I just love school. So I, I go to school as much as I can, as long as I'm not the one paying for it. Right. So uh, I would say you do whatever you need to do to be able to get your foot in the door, to get into tech and build up the skills that you need. Then once you're in there, you do whatever you need to do to make it so that you're able to progress in your career and make more money. And 
as long as that's counterbalanced with, you know, you having the the freedom and the time to be able to do all the other stuff that you want, because you don't want like golden handcuffs and, and, and all that type of stuff. But it's there's no right answer. It all depends upon your background, your skill set, the job that you're trying to get, the industry that you're in, the area of the country that you're in. So it's funny when people get all spun up about the answer one way or the other, because there there is no answer. There's no there's no right answer. Everybody has mm -hmm. their own path. Do whatever it is that's going to make it so that you're going to be the most successful. Um, if you love learning, then find a path of learning that's going to make it so that your career is going to be the most beneficial. That could be self-study. That could be search. That could be college. Could be all of them. Do all of it. Do all of it and make the most amount of money that you possibly can. Uh, yeah. Real quick. So Rebecca says, how do you get experience? By labbing. Create your own Labs, lab at home. Projects. Lab every day. Lab, volunteering. Yeah, All volunteering. 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 Yeah. Yep. I talk about so, this in my LinkedIn learning course. People underestimate volunteers, but recruiters and hiring managers, 60% of the time, look at if you're volunteering outside of work. And you can volunteer and do security and IT stuff. Mm -hmm. right? You can volunteer at nonprofits that are geared towards cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. you're building, what, it, what it does is it's building your brand. It's helping you network with folks. So even if you don't have the technical skills that can be taught, You've shown someone you've taken the initiative to do something that's not paid to help build up other skills that are necessary for cybersecurity, like soft skills, core skills. Yeah. Nobody has that experience. I'll talk about that in my course too. Yeah. And I mean, <laughs> oh, sorry. Okay. I mean, for me, like going on Mary's point, I volunteered when I was trying to get into cybersecurity. Like that's how I found WSC was um, I was talking to a mentor, she was a pen tester and she was trying to help me learn, you know, like kind of figure out where I wanted to go. And she said, you need to go find some organizations you can be a part of and talk to people and learn from them. And WSC was literally the first one that she suggested. And I joined them and I did workshops cause like we have them all the time. I like ate up all the questions. Like I, I asked everybody that I could, like whoever was in the mm -hmm. industry, I was asking them questions. It's like, how do I do this? What can I, you know, like what people are doing right now. But it's just like that volunteering experience. Mary was actually the one who posted about a small women owned MSSP that was looking to give people an opportunity mm -hmm. doing part-time security engineering work. And I applied for it and I told her the reason why. And I got that part-time position and I worked that job while I was working my sys admin job. So I was doing twos during the pandemic. Um, and from there, that's how my current company found me. They saw the work I was doing with WSC. Mm -hmm. They saw the work that I was doing at the small MSSP. And they were just like, you look like a perfect candidate. So it's like, again, like what Mary said, like volunteer. And also, mm -hmm. I mean, like, especially for me being, you know, having helped with like membership and volunteering and WSC, people that I, that I work with are end up mentoring I am keeping them in my back pocket when I know that there are companies looking mm -hmm. for people and I am put of hiring managers and recruiters because I know the work that they're doing. I see the work. I see the projects that they're working on. I see the content that they're creating. Even if you're not doing content creation, you should at least just be documenting your experience because, um, I think this is not talked about enough. Like I didn't come from DC. I don't come from the Bay area. I can't rub elbows with people. I came from Oklahoma. How am I supposed to get noticed? You know, the only way for me to get noticed was to document my experience. And I think a lot of times we missed out on like, we put so much emphasis on the technical skills, but we don't talk about enough about, do you even know how to communicate what the hell you know? Right. It's like your technical skills may be way up here, but if you communicate down here, what am I going to think your technical skills are at? I'm going to think they're here. Okay. So you're probably barring yourself from getting higher up in, in your, your career ladder by not even being able to communicate. So document, show people what you're doing. Okay. Like that's, sorry, that's just my two cents. When people ask these questions too. And I think we, we miss out so much on those that don't come from the DC area or from Atlanta or from the Bay area. Like, just me being here for RSAC um, and being able to rub elbows with people this week has been phenomenal for me. And 
I got to meet a lot of people from different companies from all over, like with Fang. And, you know, that's just an advantage I didn't have. I have it now because I'm in a company that allows me to do that, but I didn't have that then. And so to get noticed, I had to do what I had to do. And that was building stuff, doing volunteering and like reaching out and trying to find mentors and, you know, like putting in the work. I'm so tired of, of like people who are interested trying to get into tech, not wanting to put the freaking work in. You may have to do help desk, okay? You may have to yeah. do the jobs that are not sexy, that are not interesting. Ooh, McKenna so gonna get in trouble. She, she, she definitely Wait, can gave I you. Can I say something about that? I, I think yeah. that's the main issue right now. Everybody wants to make six figures right mm -hmm. off the bat. I know inflation is crazy. I know that. I know inflation is crazy. Nobody wants to work help desk. Nobody wants to start at the bottom and work their way up. But when it comes to a lot of these technical um, different careers that you get into, you have to start somewhere near the bottom, if not at the bottom. Right. Like I started in help desk. I started being a, um, a material handler. That was my very first tech job. I made ten dollars an hour. Then I made twelve dollars an hour as um, an IT help desk intern. Right. Like you work your way up. Everybody wants to jump straight to six figures like I don't think anybody here started at six figures. I'd be surprised, you know? So I think that's the, the real issue here is that everybody sees the TikToks, the reels, the YouTube stories about how they got into tech and they made six figures, but it's, it's not going to be everybody's reality. So mm -hmm. right. I, I want to add a couple of things too. Like uh, one thing is, yep, you can volunteer, but also don't sleep on apprenticeships. Mm -hmm. Um Go working at jobs at like um, Home Depot has an IT department, so they're actually picking people off the floor to come work in in their IT department. The same way with Publix, Publix has an IT department. Dollar General has and a an IT department. department. Right? Mm -hmm. you have to, yeah, and you have to look at what what they're what how they're doing it. They actually they actually have apprenticeships. Yale has an actual apprenticeship. I actually hooked up a young lady at a conference we'll get to that in a minute at a conference i said hey you looking for work did you say you know this okay boom on the spot five minutes we're walking over there i introduced her to the guy she started out with seventy thousand dollars and now she's making over 300 and she did it in three years however <laughs> you got to put in work in order to do what you need to do you can't sit on the sideline and be like oh i'm gonna look at this youtube video and never touch a keyboard never <laughs> Up a command line. Please stop using <laughs> the GUI. Get to the command line. It's okay. Vim is your friend. Pico, Nano, I don't care. Just do something on the command okay. line so you know you got some type of skill I feel set. Attacked. So now, <laughs> game, baby. All right, so let, let let let's 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 do this now. So we're gonna we're gonna we're <clears throat> real quick. So now you 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 obtain the skills. You got a job. You're making decent money, right? But believe it or not, as much as we all love what we do none of us want to do this shit forever so that's why i want to jump into part two which we're going to have to kind of speed through now so uh part two is we're going to talk about using one source to help generate others and the first one that i'm going to talk about is the the importance of a 401k with a company match i think that one gets slept on a lot mm -hmm. it's free money mm -hmm. it's it's money that you can set and forget like i tell people if you set and, and I was a victim of this in the beginning. I was like, ah, I'll wait till I pay off these bills or pay off these debts first, and then I'll do a 401k. And then I'm then, then I'm three, four years in, and I'm like, shit, I'm I'm behind the eight ball. So now I'm throwing every little bit of money I can at a 401k. So now what I tell people coming in, I'm like, listen, if you set your 401k from day one or from whenever they tell you to do it, set it and forget it. And then budget around whatever you get from there. So Anybody can go start there, but let's let we make sure we don't get too much into the sermons, Pastor David. <laughs> <laughs> but leave. yes, anybody tell you know, anybody, you know, what's your thoughts on 401ks? I would say you just make sure that whatever the match is that the company has, that you make sure that you're hitting that. Put in enough mm -hmm. so that you do that. And then if you decide that you want to invest in other things or you don't have a savings account built up or you want to buy some property or whatever, then you can use some other money for that and do a trade off with that versus maxing out the rest of the 401k. Mm -hmm. Or 
max out the rest of the 401k and then do your other investments after that. But the main thing is just make sure that whatever the max is that the company or not the max, the matches that the company is going to be giving you, you need to be taking full uh, benefit of that to make sure that you're getting all of that free money from the company. I'd also add, make sure you understand the vesting schedule. Mm. Um, that was a mistake I made early on. So I, I thought I had all this money and I left too early and didn't get to keep a portion of it. So make sure you really understand the vesting schedule <clears throat> and kind of plan your exit strategy from the company around that. Um, I'm, I'm going to just add this. <clears throat> if you do not be afraid to go get um, a financial advisor, right? Mm -hmm. You want to go make all these six figures, all this stuff or whatever. It's a totally different level. Um, if you've never been used to working with that type of money and all the things that happen there, the tax consequences, all of that. Um, if you feel like you don't want a financial advisor, um, then start Googling and researching and making sure you're understanding all the things that come with it. Things like vesting schedules. If you are with your 401k, now a lot of them you can um, roll like roll up, like so you can basically start at 3% and say have an increase 2% every year. Just start doing it. You're not going to miss it. I promise you, like you'll be okay. It's taken out before you even get there, but get to doing it now, especially if you're younger, because the two things that's going to work in your favor is time and dollar cost averaging. Most of those things are set up in like base mutual funds and index that will, you can, you can go and research all of it over time. Like nothing just really beats an index fund versus you trying to figure out what you want to pick in. So mm -hmm. get in there, if you don't know the things that are, that, if you don't know the terms, if they intimidate you, either go Google them or go get a financial advisor. Don't be too proud to say, I don't know what I'm doing and go find somebody and say, help me understand this. Mm -hmm. I just suggest they get B's book. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll, One I'll other like thing with the vesting, if you, if you are leaving money on the table because of vesting when you're moving over to another company, uh, you can use that as a negotiating tactic to get a bonus. From the other company I've, I've done that before yeah been like hey i you want me to come leave the company i'm 80 percent vested right now so i'm gonna be leaving this amount of money on the table so if you really want me to come then you can give me you know a bonus it might not necessarily all the way equate back to what you're leaving on the table but at least we'll give you some leverage and you know you might recoup some of that yep so um, i got five things i'm gonna drop real quick 401ks are great max out yes there's also backdoor IRAs. If you want to get into that, we can. I talk about that on my channel. The other part, the other one is some companies don't just offer 401ks. I worked for a company where they did an automatic 25% into your 401k, no matter what you put in. So there are some companies out there that automatically put in 25%, 15%, and 10%. Read the fine line, read the fine print. Another one is when, when you talked about going to get in a financial advisor, Great. Also, start looking at estate planning. I talk mm -hmm. about this too. You need to look at like how like there's a whole big thing around inherited IRAs. Like if you pass when you pass away and you leave this money behind, the government's going to take for forty percent of that. How do you protect against that? Those are things that we have to start looking at if we're talking about building wealth and wealth accumulation. Those are uh, uh, most important. And last thing before I get out of here, there is three bucket strategy when you're talking about uh, how your money is supposed to be laid out. Look into all those things. I'm not just preaching it. I'm telling you I'm living it and I do it. So that's it. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess, What's I guess your I special channel? Women in Linux. Women Got in it. Linux is my channel. Yeah, I, I guess I could just add one thing, you know, don't sleep on the Roth IRAs as well. Um, you can invest into your 401k up to the match, but definitely put money into your Roth IRA. If you make over the limits, you can do a backdoor Roth. Um, that's something that I wish I would have did all of my years working was put money into my Roth IRA. Um, it allows your money to grow tax free. Um, and then also, if you're able to start uh, investing into different cash flow and assets. Maybe when you start making more money, you can go and you can house hack your first property, right? So you can either buy a multifamily, live in one unit, rent out the other ones, or you can buy a house, rent out the rooms, rent out the basement. That's what I did. Um, and it allowed me to, to have more financial freedom and pay off debt. So uh, that's definitely something that you can do when you start making this tech money. But there's so many tips I, I check out my financial starter kit book. Um, it seems like other people <clears throat> here have uh, resources as well. So 
definitely check out their resources, their YouTube channels too. So, all right. So we're going to get it. We're going to go a couple minutes over if, if y'all can spare it. But um, right now with, with the, with the way inflation is, um, Mary, I want you to talk about the importance of bookkeeping and then talk about what you do and then also what you do, David, on the side. And then I just want to ask this quick question about should we really be looking at real estate and cryptocurrency right now in the current market? So I think that will be a question uh, more for bees. And then we can uh, if there's any if anybody else wants to stay on a little bit longer after that, that's fine. If not, we can we can wrap from there. So bookkeeping. Mary, go. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for putting me on the spot. No, um, if you have a small business, it's really important. Either you hire somebody or you manage it yourself. You could miss a whole lot of tax breaks, deductions, um, all kinds of things that can help you keep money in your pocket. Um, I'm not a, I haven't done bookkeeping for 30 years. I started at the nonprofit doing the nonprofit's books and I kind of just learned how to do it, um, following folks uh, on Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff. But what it's done for us, because I manage my own own books for the business, my side gigs, um, and I do my own taxes too, but I had I hired a CPA this year and they actually got me back double what I would normally get. That's because so. she's making, that's she's making too much money. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really important to have somebody that's knowledgeable around managing your books for a small business because that's how you're going to be able to scale and start to grow. So if any of y'all need a bookkeeper on this on this call, let me know. <laughs> My rates are low. I'll give you the friends and family discount. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's, it's really important just to understand you know, what's coming in, what's going out, how to move stuff, where investments need to go. Um, and, and just having that visibility into what your business is doing so that you can make adjustments throughout the year. All right. David, what about you? Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll speak in general. So I am a licensed finance professional um, from life insurance, securities, and portfolios. So I can talk you through, I can walk you through all that and build all that. Now, because of that, I have to be very generic. I'm not giving anybody any kind of financial advice because the SEC will come after me. Um, <laughs> But what I will say is, in general, like, like, like that's what I was saying. Like, don't be afraid to reach out to somebody, ask somebody. If anybody needs anything, you guys can find me on the on the Twitterverse or whatever. Hit me up. I'm glad to set up an appointment with you and walk you through any and all of that. But um, I started this about six years ago. Started with credit repair, helping people understand their credit. From there, to understand the importance of life insurance, actually building a solid portfolio um, of how you need to manage your financial life and going forward. Right. Um, because when you have a plan and you know where you're going, you can start to do the things and all the stuff starts to make sense. Um, and you can actually put all this good tech money uh, to get use. And I think that getting your stuff in order will actually give you a clearer picture as to how much money you have, because I, I know it's probably ta is probably the wrong thing to say, but I kind of say I kind of tell people like treat investing or treat save money like gambling. Don't spend it if you if you don't have it. But in order to have it, you need to make you need to do your books and make sure all your stuff is 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 legit. So mm -hmm. um, with that being said, um, Henri, Diera, McKenna. What tips do you have as far as, you know, make when you're making money as far as things that you do to save and stay disciplined? Uh, I'll go first. Uh, won't be long. I actually made a video about this kind of like don't let like that tech salary make you be like a victim of like lifestyle creep. So I typically just tell myself, even though I can buy it, I don't really need it. And so that's kind of a way to kind of stay disciplined because, I mean, you know, you start seeing more zeros and you're on your check. You're like, oh, man, I can go get this car, this car. But then like. Do I really need this car? Then you're looking at now gas. I mean, gas is just killing everybody. I don't care if you're making a lot of money or no money. Gas is just you no know, ridiculous. Uh, it's just really like, you know, not buying more than what you need, but not also like I see people trying to be like super frugal, like, you know, undoing the two ply tissue and trying to save and stuff. You really got to do all that. <laughs> That's why they got to get three ply. <laughs> <laughs> it's just you know all about just like being smart uh, learning from people that you know know more uh, than you do about finances and, and see what you can do to to get ahead and you know look for the long run instead of like the, you know, the short term ladies I try to um, like budget fund money and stick to it um, so 
So in the, in recent years, I really tried to be really strict with my budgeting and make sure that I'm one putting money away. I just started getting into like investing and um, talking with a financial planner about what that looks like, especially having a son who may want to go to college, he may want to go to trade school, but I want him to be able to um, have the flexibility to choose what he wants to do. And then from there, um, obviously making sure all your bills are taken care of. And then from there, you know, budgeting out some fun money um, and then being disciplined with that. Um, I think when, I think a lot of, where a lot of people go wrong is like on reset lifestyle creep. Also just trying to deprive themselves of things. And then they end up going on these like shopping or, or spending mm-hmm. binges because they haven't allowed themselves the space to um, afford those things. So I think it's a, it's important to have a healthy balance of the two. Yeah. I think I'm going to end up repeating a lot of what everybody else has said, but like I came from accounting before I came into tech. So I had a little bit of idea of how to manage my money, but I only knew how to do it from like a, business standpoint so I spent a lot of time learning out uh, learning about personal finance and when I got started I did you know the real basic like 50 30 20 so if you're real new to budgeting that's a good place to start if you don't know where else to go I mean as I've grown my my money um I've it's gotten way more advanced to that and I you know got a financial advisor when I hit that I don't know what I'm doing um I need some help here but Uh, just like everybody else said, like, you know, like lifestyle creep, it's real easy to just like, I got a little bit more in the bank. I'm going to get me that extra Amazon package. I told myself I wasn't going to get, or I'm going to go ahead and buy me this little extra. And, and you got to be just careful. It's like, you can ask my family, like we stay on a very tight budget. I always have like our expenses may fluctuate because I'm, you know, we'd be helping out family and stuff, but like, I, I pretty much keep the same budget I had when we was broke. All right. Like when we was living paycheck to paycheck, that's the budget I have kept since then. And I've watched my money um, just grow. But like a good resource that I that I used um, when I was just first learning about it and Googling was like a nerd wallet. So you can always do something like that. There's lots of like free information out there, just like there is anything else just google take the time to to read up on stuff like it's it's not it's not that hard but again if you need help you know there's plenty of people around that can give you good advice just be careful about who you taking that advice from that's all i gotta say all right right. so i'm 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 gonna add this right i'm probably gonna blow up everything everybody said here Uh oh (laughs) i'm gonna put you on the big screen i'm gonna put you on i'm the worst when it comes to lifestyle creep. So I know that, right? <laughs> <laughs> I like I like to go places. I like things. I like to enjoy life. So I know if I want something, I need an asset that's going to pay for it. Yep. Or what I consider my skill set is an intangible asset. So I need to add to that so I can go make more money in order to provide for that. The more money that I make, the more I'm going to invest, the more I'm going to buy assets. I may have, I may do something like, hey, I know that I need to create this course or or whatnot. I'm going to pay myself first, but I'm most definitely going to go buy what I want to go buy and enjoy myself. My goal, and I tell everybody this, my original goal for retirement was $10 million. My new goal, after I've been talking to people, there's like, that's not enough money. I need to up my game. So that's my goal. That's how I live. I'm not going to tell you not to put your money away, but I'm also going to tell you to enjoy what you can because people tend to leave this place really, really early. So enjoy your life. Enjoy the fruits of your labor, but also make sure you put your money away. <laughs> the opposite, probably everybody else. No, I I, I, I like that. Uh, and I mean, I need I needed to hear that because I'm somewhere in between. I think everybody, like I lived frugal for years. I I'm just starting to spend a little bit, but every time I do it, it, it pains me, <laughs> right? And like my wife is like, we can do that. And I'm like, uh, but can we know? <laughs> right? And now I'm somewhere where Tamika is, where it's like. Okay, so I need to develop an asset 
mm-hmm. that will be able to pay for that, mm-hmm. whether it's creating content or stuff like that. And then I'm looking at things for investing and playing the catch up thing. And one of the things that I have been looking at and bees, like I said, I'm going to ask you is, you know, real estate and crypto. And of course, you know, you have those who jump in and cause that, you know, that FOMO, that fear of missing out and they don't know what they're doing. But now you have people who want to do it, but now they're scared to jump in because, you know, crypto is is on a downslide and real estate, the inflation, the housing market is ridiculous. So are is cryptocurrency and real estate still two good um, areas to invest money in? And if so, how can you do it when yesterday's price is literally not today's price? Right, right. Um, I, I say this, I, I recommend everybody to try to own where they live at, right? The price of apartments is, is not going down. Price of rent is not going down. So eventually, whatever you do, try to own where you live at, right? And you can do that through FHA loans. Um, and you can also try to find some deals on real estate as well. So that's something that's that you can do to get into real estate. Um, and then when it comes to cryptocurrency, right, I'll, I'll add stocks too. Stocks are down just as much as crypto, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so when it comes to investing, you don't only want to invest during the bull market when things are going up. You want to look for those assets that are discounted and then try to invest into those, whether you're dollar cost averaging, buying at the bottom, whatever you want to do. Um, and you hold on to those assets when the bull run returns, right? So when it comes to the stock market, there's always ups and downs. Same thing with crypto. It's very cyclical, um, ups and downs, but some of the bear markets last longer in crypto for sure. Uh, with NFTs, not going to lie to you, probably wouldn't touch too many NFTs right now. So you, if you, if you want to take that risk, you could take it, but I wouldn't touch too many NFTs at this moment. So you're, so you're, saying, so you're saying buy Luna right now? No. <laughs> Luna, is zero. <laughs> Luna, Luna's dead. Yeah, Luna's dead. So, yeah, you gotta you gotta be really careful, right? And especially with crypto, um, being in crypto since 2017, some coins will not make it out of the. Well, a lot of coins won't make it out of the bear market. So, whatever you do buy, you you better be like really sure that they're gonna make it out of the bear market, or you're just gonna be losing money for the next few years until you decide to sell. And one other thing I'll say, and I think I saw you actually post this the other day too. Get yourself a cold wallet. Get your money. Get your money off those platforms. And this is coming from someone who just who just left working for a crypto platform. So mm-hmm. get your get your money off them platforms. Get yourself a cold wallet. And and and, and yeah, <laughs> yeah. I grabbed my I grabbed the Arculus uh, today. But yes, so definitely do that. Um. All right, so we're going to wrap it up because we're about 15 minutes over. So with that, I'm going to give each of you a couple minutes. If there's one piece of advice that you would want to you would want someone to walk away with today, whether it's getting into tech or maintaining their stuff in tech or, or, or doing getting getting their finances right, what would that be? And then tell them how to find you. So we will start with JB, and so we'll go JB, McKenna, David, Diera, Henri, Mary, Tamika, then Bees. All right. So JB, you are first. Cool. So I mean, I, I guess I would say uh, money doesn't buy happiness directly, but it can make things a lot less stressful. Allows you access to more things that you enjoy and can improve not only your quality of life, but the quality of life for other people that you either care about or or come uh, into contact with. So um, happiness itself is an internal thing. So if you're already a happy person, then, you know, that's gravy once you start to stack that money on top of that. Um, But if you aren't, then maybe it will, uh, the money will give you, you know, a little bit more time or access to things that will make you be a little bit more uh, introspective and maybe be able to work some of that stuff out. Um, But as some other folks mentioned, I think really it comes down to if you can marry up what you're good at with what you enjoy and you can make some really good money from that, then in life, that's a blessing and you have to take advantage of whatever blessings come your way. So. All right. Um, I forgot the order I just said. So um, whoever, <laughs> wants to, whoever wants to go next. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Um, yeah. Uh, this is advice I like will preach until I die 
find you a community. I cannot tell you how much having a community has changed my life, not just for my career, but for personal growth too. Um, so if you don't know where to begin, a community is a great spot. There are plenty of organizations out there, too many to name, to be honest. Um, but there are great people attached to these organizations. There are great mentors attached to them. Um, and there are great opportunities attached to them. So if you don't know where to start, start there. And also like y'all be willing to do the work, be willing to know your fundamentals. Like there is no, I mean, like, sure. You could probably find a quick, quick route, but you're going to burn out fast. And if, if this is important to you and you want to make that bag, have the skills that are worth that bag. Um, yeah, that's my piece of advice. If you want to find more about me, it's CyberKenna on Twitter or CyberKenna.com or on LinkedIn, McKenna Yankee. Y'all can find me there. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm sorry. J and J yeah, JB, how to tell them how to find you. Yeah, I just was going to throw that in the chat because I completely forgot to do that. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, uh, JBizzle703, kind of as my, my name there says. Uh, YouTube, Cyber Insight, and you can check out my blog at jbcsec.com forward slash insights. Okay. All right. So who who's next? Again, I I think David next. Yeah. All right, David. Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all gonna leave me alone, man. Um, <laughs> oh, it's, it's my show. I do what the hell I want. Hey, damn right. <laughs> that will never stop you from doing it. <laughs> I'll say this. Um, when when we're born, we're all giving a certain number of heartbeats, and none of us know how many that is. So take each heartbeat and decide what it is that you really want in life and go for it. And remember that it's the, it's the journey. That's the most important thing. Yes. You want to have a destination, but enjoy the journey and embrace it. And you do that. You'll always have your perspective that you need and you'll, you'll find the happiness that you want, but make the best every moment. Uh, you can find me ebonyascent.com. Easiest way to find me. There you go. <laughs> Got it. Hey. All right. I'm going to go next. And I think I'm at the David. Uh, I was gonna say if you was watching this and you know you've been struggling to get in the tech coffee, you took down some good notes. Uh, if not, you can come to the various people that was on this panel. They got you know nothing but good game on how to get into the field, or you can tune in to my podcast where we giving you know weekly gems. Matter of fact, episode dropping on YouTube tomorrow at eight a.m. But um, you can find me everywhere at Textual Chatter, or you can go to my website textualconsulting.com and. With the consultation if you're really trying to get in cybersecurity and you're struggling. All right. Dear. Um, I'll go. Yep. Um, so my advice would be to um, take your time, figure out what it is you want to do in tech. And once you've settled on that, don't get caught up in shiny object syndrome. Um, I really feel for new people, especially on Twitter right now, because I can only imagine being new and trying to figure out your path. And every time you open Twitter, it's another like new cert or another new skill that everyone's talking about. And you're seeing all these offer letters and it can really throw you off um, of your focus. Um, so that would be my advice. And you can find me across all social media at CCIE by 30. All right. Who's so going I next? I guess it's on me. Uh, so wanted to add a couple of things. Don't be afraid to go buy land as well as an asset. Don't be afraid to buy and group with people. Make sure you uh, set up your, your proper uh, paperwork and actually go buy businesses as well. Don't be afraid to do that. And last but not least, if you're trying to get into tech, you do have to lab every day or at least be in a, be in a community that actually promotes you labbing every day and you all get together. You shouldn't do this tech journey alone. Most people try to do it alone. They fail. They always leave and they come back. And last but not least, take your money and invest it. But have a little fun. <laughs> hey, real quick, if any of y'all have products or anything that y'all got coming up, please plug it. Like I'm not, I'm not yeah. telling y'all. You please flex. I, I got a pretty interesting partnership that will, at least for the next month, that will be coming out tomorrow, probably around 10 a.m. I can't say anything about it right now, but. But, well then you don't then you don't talk about it right Pretty now. Big. Pretty big. I got a course to drop in in Q3. I mean, you know, there that's you one go. thing I'm working on. Same Anybody here. that like I said, any plat any platforms teaching any resources y'all want to share, go ahead, put it in the chat. Please, please, yeah, I please a, do. I got a 
got a course that I'm I'm actually gonna hop off here in a minute and um start working on and I'm also uh trying to partner with some people to buy a data center. So um nice. Nice. Talk nice. more about that afterwards, but well um, shit. Uh, right. <laughs> live life in abundance, play hard. I need to add another asset so I can go get something else that I want. What, what the hell is the next shiny thing you trying to buy a fucking rocket ship? Like I would like I would like to have my own women in Linux jet. I would like to to fly black nice. on my own. Let me hit this jet. for you again. Put some respect on my name. <laughs> and y'all see my name, put some respect. I had to hit that for her. Like I said, I think I think between Tamika Bees and Mary. Uh-uh. I think, uh-uh. I think that listen, that, listen, don't listen. That that side the Listen, I'm not, I, 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 I ain't counting nobody pockets, so I'm just gonna shut the hell up. But <laughs> Big Ross got a song called Big Time. That's what I'm gonna call them Big Time. <laughs> I, don't, I don't make as much money as people think I do. Um, but <laughs> my one word of advice don't wait for somebody to hold your hand, just take the initiative, do the research, reach out to people. The worst they can do is say no. Um, I think early on in my career, had I done that, I'd probably be a little bit further than I am. But that's my advice to you. You can find me on LinkedIn, um, on Twitter, Mary Galloway. My hair is not red on any of my photos. Um, my LinkedIn learning course dropped at the end of May. So if you're wanting to get into cybersecurity, I believe hey, it's put, free right now. So take a look at it. Um, I gotta go find it. Just find me on Google, on LinkedIn. Just Google it. <laughs> no, just find me on LinkedIn and I'll, I'll give you the link. Um, Follow Cyber Jitsu. We have our conference coming up on the 18th. It is Father's Day weekend and Juneteenth weekend. Um, but it's going to be a fun time. Food, drinks, snacks, learning, networking, all of that good jazz. Raices is going to be there. Uh, McKenna's going to be there. Whoever else is in the D.C., Northern Virginia, Maryland area will be there. So DMV. come check us out. DMV. Yes. That's me in a nutshell. And if you're in Vegas, let me know for Black Hat. Uh, I live here, so. Yeah, I'll be there. We can all hang out. <laughs> Hold on, we 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 do we do OSINT here at Infosec on Plug. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there, since she won't do it, I do it. Damn it! All right, so who we got left? We have uh, Beast. Yeah, yeah, I'm left. So right. um, I I would say you know don't be afraid to get into tech. Uh, tech can change your life. It seems like it's changed everybody's life in here. So don't be afraid to get in and, and start learning and take action and be able to, you know, learn whatever skills that you want to learn to get to that income level you want to get to. Um, and then just use your money to live the life that you want to live, really. So whether you want to save your money, whether you want to invest, whether you want to spend some, you know, just make sure you're responsible with your money. Um, and you can find me pretty much on any platform at Bees SLS, uh, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. Uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much where you drop, find drop, me drop your, Yeah, I was gonna say where your, where's your content because I know you got <laughs> content. I'm yeah, about to, I'm about to do that. That's gonna be my summer, my my, my summer studying when when I'm on break. Yeah, yeah, and I, I got my financial starter kit book, um, investing for everyone course teaches you about stocks, crypto, um, precious metals, alternative assets, NFTs, all of that. So I have a lot of different things, and then of course I have my SLS community where we're an educational community focused on career, investing, and fitness. So check us out. Hey, real quick, is um is mobile home still a good move? I know people who are making plenty of money in mobile homes yep. every day. Big every in day. Florida. I know Big people who Florida. own mobile home parks. Yep. My, I was saying because my my, my dad my dad my dad has been asking me about it. You know, he, he's the first person I knew that looked like me that was like real estate's the move and i was like yeah i don't know and now him and my mom's is living their best life and i'm just sitting there like so let me give you this fact so it's is is a, a shortage of eight million homes in the united states it's only eight hundred thousand being made right now mm-hmm. all right well then i guess that answers my question mm-hmm. all right so all right, so everybody dropped their links in the chat. Everybody gave their piece of advice. My piece of advice to everybody is like, I think I'm just going to repeat a bunch of stuff is just don't be afraid to do the work. And like the money, the money is there. The money is there. I mean, and the skills are, and, and the skills are there. I mean, if you learn enough and you learn, you get yourself into a niche spot, 
uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I, I saw a report the other day. People are paying Web3 developers somewhere up to like 750K. Uh, some, in some places, 1 million, 2 million. And, 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 to, and to, to, da and to David, Henri, and JB's point, that, that money comes with a certain level of responsibility. So make sure you know your stuff, because if not, you're going to be stuck. And guess what? You're going to burn yourself out. And I don't care how much money you're making. When that burnout hits you and that burnout will hit you and hit you hard, the money ain't going to be worth it sometimes. So make sure you know your stuff so you're, comf you're comfortable enough in your skin to stand on them platforms or stand on them stages, stand behind that keyboard like Ty Wilson says, and, that, and, and prove that the keyboard don't lie. If not, you're going to be one of these folks out here who's just f fronting for social media and hoping that, you know, that will get you something <laughs> else. So just do the work and, you know, just be very careful. You know, I don't know if we're going into a recession. I don't know. That could be that's a conversation for another day. What is but that? <laughs> right. Well, that was going to be my point. I don't know if we're really going into a recession, but guess what? This job field ain't. This job field ain't gonna feel it, especially if you know what you're doing. So, get the skills, cause guess what? When they lay, cause with, with, when they're gonna lay people off, and that's gonna re, that's gonna require even more demand for the skills necessary to do these jobs. So get you get you know, don't be afraid to to buckle down and lock yourself in wherever you're at, and learn the skills. Yeah, you might not go out and party sometimes. Yeah, you might not be able to go hang out with your friends or whatever here and there, but. Guess what? Six to six to twelve months from now, you're gonna be like, "Oh, I'm glad I did that shit." Why are you sitting on a vacation somewhere and ain't mad? Probably <laughs> saying you ain't you ain't making no money in tech. You a drug dealer. With that, <laughs> <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, everybody watching, this has been another episode of Infosec Unplugged. I have been your host, Davin Jackson. This has been my panel. McKenna, JB, Deara, Bees, David Lee, Henri, the Mary Galloway, and Tamika Reed. Please make sure you give all of these people a follow. Make sure you go ahead and subscribe to everything that they got going on. If you're in the area next uh, next week for, for Cyber Jutsu Con, please go be there. I'm kicking myself that I can't be there. Um, you know, go out, show support to all of these folks because, you know, it's just the right thing to do. And with that, I will see y'all. I might do a Q&A next week, Wednesday, because Thursday I'll actually be traveling. But um, until then, y'all stay safe, save your money, enjoy it, and go buy a jet like Tamika. <laughs> I'm going on the jet with you, Tamika. Y'all take it easy. Be safe. <laughs>